Allow me to introduce myself. I am Gilbert Bates, as I'm sure you may have surmised. I'd like to extend my thanks to you, madam, for putting an end to the difficulties at my factory. I've been informed that there is a matter you wish to discuss. Hmm. Quite so. Mm -hmm. So, I'd like to ask you about the ring. Great gods! How did you come by that ring? A gnome gave it to me as he lay dying. A gnome? What manner of tomfoolery is this? Are you certain it was not a dwarf? Of course, I have never seen skinny, beardless dwarf. Yes, I, I am familiar with the dwarves and their customs. Tell me, was there anything distinctive about this fellow? He had a, a scar over his left eye. By Alberic, I knew it in my heart. That was no gnome. It was Stena Rock Cutter. Mm -hmm. Who's Stena? Why would Dwarf shave his beard? Stena was an old friend of mine. But for him to cut off his beard, by the gods, it's unthinkable. But please tell me. Did he say anything to you before he died? Did he say anything about... about me? He said he escaped to Warnus about the evil. The evil? What evil? And where did he escape from? He didn't say. I was hoping you would know what he, it means. Something horrible must have happened after I... after I... Did he s say anything else? He referred to you as a boy. Why would he do that? I do not know. Even though dwarves reckon time differently than humans, he must have realized that I am now an old man. I ask it is because I was but a boy when I... when I betrayed his trust all those years ago. How did you come to betray him? Right. That is quite a long tale. A tale of my shame, it is. I am listening. It is ironic that my greatest mistake is that which brought me such wealth. As a youth, I was enamored of all things dwarven, so I sought out the nearest clan and attempted to impress them with my grasp of their technology. They laughed. It was obviously a novelty to them. A ridiculous human who had a natural bent towards technology. I suppose it didn't help that I was only 14 years old at the time. I became something they humored to entertain themselves. Stena was the only one who truly called me a friend in all those years. And betrayal is how I repaid his friendship. It was he who first showed me their steam engine, as he knew I could appreciate the beautiful intricacies of its design. They had left it to rust in a corner, as they had very little use for a device that would reduce the need for sheer physical power. Imagine a dwarf relying on a device to do his digging for him. It's preposterous! I asked him if I could tinker with it, perhaps improve on it, I knew this was the key to becoming truly a part of the dwarven world. I quickly devised a way to use it to power a pump for draining the mines. When I fell all over myself trying to explain it to them, laughter was once again their only response. I knew I had to somehow gain their respect, so I hastily sketched some schematics and set out to prove my theory. The struggling human mining company that I brought the plans to offered me a share in their mines for the steam pump. I was ecstatic. I had not a care for their mines or their money. I desired vindication. When I returned to the dwarves to boast of my accomplishments and be welcomed into their clan, they were gone. The inventions came quickly after that, fueled by my anger and confusion. How could they have denied me my place amongst them after all my labors? 
Somehow I felt I could still prove myself to them. I continued searching for them in all my spare moments, but to no avail. But then they came. The rope, they appeared to me late one night, and they warned me to never speak of, nor try to find the dwarves again. Still being a mere lad, you can imagine the terror that put into me. As my wealth and power grew, I shook off some of my youthful fear, and hired the first in a long chain of investigators to locate Stenar and his clan. None of them ever returned with any worthwhile information, and some never returned at all. The ones that did told of vicious traps and creatures attacking them from the shadows. As word of these failures spread, it became more and more difficult to find souls brave enough to take on the challenge. But why did they, he send me here with your ring? He knew that ring would lend veracity to your tale. I gave Stenna that ring the last time I saw him. Now he is dead. Only we knew what he meant by the evil. Virgil here thinks it has something to do with his religion. I don't put much stock in religious ramblings myself. But if you feel it could help you to get more information on the Panari, you should go to their temple on the northern end of Lion's Head Circle. I'm more concerned with who killed Stenna and why. And what all this has to do with my relationship with the Black Mountain Clan? So what is to be done? There must be some clue left in the Black Mountain Mines. I am certain of this. You seem to be a resourceful individual. Would you be interested in searching the mines for some clue as to their whereabouts? I would make it worth your while, I can assure you. I'd like to ask him some further questions before I commit myself. Of course. What do you wish to ask of me? You didn't actually invent steam engine. I have never actually claimed that I did. It was just people's assumption. I have invented any number of devices based off its principles, but I did not invent the first one. What did you think would happen when you sold steam engine? Such is the enthusiasm, or perhaps the impetuousness of youth, that I did not stop to consider the consequences of my actions. All I could see was a way to gain the respect of the dwarves. It was all that mattered. It must be unsettling to get, get so much price for the steam engine. Yes, it is, and it torments me every day. I was but a child when the road ones gave me their dire warnings. And I was terrified. They were explicit that I was not to reveal the origins of the steam engine. Perhaps you can answer a few more questions. Of course. What do you wish to ask of me? Why did they need to impress the dwarves after they rejected you? You don't understand. I was... I was orphaned at a young age. The dwarves represented everything I wanted my family to be. A tight-knit clan. And the respect I had for their brilliance with technology. I made a mistake common to youth. I thought intelligence equal compassion. I needed to belong to find that I had some worth. You were orphaned? What happened? My mother died bringing me into this world. I believe my father died then as well, even though he continued to exist in the world for some eight more years. When he could stand living no longer, he took his own life. But I don't think you like that. He left me decently provided for, and with his grasp on reality becoming more tenuous each day, I believe he felt I would be safer in the care of others. The last thing he did in this life was to give me that ring. And then you gave it to Stenar? That is how much his friendship meant to me. I was devastated when he disappeared with the rest of the clan. I believe I felt more deserted and alone then than I did when my father killed himself. Uh, of course, question. what do you wish to ask of me? What can you tell me about recent attempt on your life? There's not much, really, as Chaka is given to overzealousness in his protection of my person. 
You rendered the interloper lifeless before I could question him. All he had on his person was an amulet bearing the symbol of the Malokian hand, the eye in the hexagram. Malokian hand. They were the religious order of assassins some 500 years ago. Rumors of their continued existence surface periodically, but are usually proven to be hoaxes. I figure this for a new group trying to adopt some of the prestige of the name. They seem to be after me as well. Let us hope for both our sakes that they are mere pretenders to the name, then. I would be loath to have the authentic Malokians out for my blood. Why do you suppose they tried to kill us? I do not know, but I am beginning to believe they are behind Stenna's death. This all seems to be pointing to my involvement with the Black Mountain Clan, doesn't it? That is why I feel it is imperative to find out their fate. Our lives seem to be dependent on it, in fact. Perhaps she will wait some of our lives more than others, eh? Yes, it would seem I am well protected here. However, the more staff one has, the easier it is for one of them to be bribed or replaced with an assassin. Also, my notoriety keeps me a prisoner in my house. They will always know where to look for me. You, on the other hand, can blend with the crowd, so to speak. What of course. What do you wish to ask of me? And now business. So can you tell me about your business? Well, as you know, I am the foremost manufacturer of steam engines in Arcanum. Virtually without competition. I am working on a prototype for a smaller, more efficient engine right now, as a matter of fact. I also have various interests in other technological endeavors. Oh, how you devastate the new competition, so. It is not much of an accomplishment when old Cedric Appleby is your chief competitor. Poor Cedric. Always was a bit of a blundering fool. I really wish I could have convinced him to come work for me. Why, I mean if he's such an idiot. Cedric and I were close friends when we were children. He was furious that I wouldn't introduce him to the dwarves. Can you imagine? I had a difficult enough time gaining their respect without his simple-mindedness. After I invented the steam engine, he began to despise me. Strangely enough, I wish he was still my friend some days. Of course. What do you wish to ask me? So, no. Mm -hmm. Well, as you know, I am the foremost manufacturer of it's steam engines in our kingdom. Do you have any labor difficulties in your factories? Why do you ask? You're not a labor sympathizer, are you? A unionizer, perhaps? I can assure you, my workers are happy to have the jobs I give them. I treat all orcs, true blood, and half breed alike better than any other factory owner. Of that I can assure you. This is not quite a feat because uh, you know we know that uh, factories uh, basically exploit the shit out of the uh, orcs, and it's very hard to tell who is the worst. But everyone is part of the problem here, so it's not like you know when you are better than shit that you are magically good. Yes, I can understand that. With all the talk of labor difficulties and protests in all the journals. But in answer to your original question, I believe that I am fortunate to have been spared a lot of the problems others have been experiencing with their workers. I do believe it is because I treat my workers better than most. Why, their working conditions are almost human. So, few more questions. Of course. And what here, you wish to ask if you paid close attention, reaction changed to 54. It's because when you ask for business, well, as you know, ask for a labor ask. difficulties yes, and back out, what you, you gain plus 5. Well, as you know, where do you ask? Yes, of course. Well, as you, where do you and ask? you can repeat yes, this law. Well, as you know, I am the former... Where do, yeah, of course. Well, as you know, where do you... Of course. Well, where do you ask? You're not a... Yeah, of course. Well, where do you ask? Of course. Well, where do you ask? Of course. Well, as you... Where do you... 
Of course. Well, as you, where do you ask? Yes, of course. I have you decided to, to explore me? Black Mountain Clan and mines for you. Splendid! Here, let me mark your map with the location of the Black Mountain Mines. I am certain there must be some clues to be found there. Please, return as soon as you have found anything. I shall return with the information you have requested. Oh, uh, one more thing. I would like to purchase my ring back from you. I'd give you two hundred coins. It would mean quite a bit to me. My father gave it to me before he died. Holy shit, you... <laughs> okay, okay, I, I'm not that Jewish and to do that, but holy hell. <laughs> you can be stingy. Certainly, here it is. Much obliged. I will speak with you when you return. I am departing. Okay, thanks for watching.